beautiful farm property, wine cave, rolling hills of California. We must be in wine country. We're gonna be visiting CJ, an electrician that owns CNC Electric. Talking trades, we're talking about what it's like to be an electrician. Let's get going. Build Original Series, hosted by Matt Reisinger. Talking Trades, brought to you by Front Door and Sashco. Holy cow, CJ, this is beautiful. You're finally here. Uh, <laughs> welcome to wine country. Man, this is everything I was expecting. I've been talking about it for a while, but this is a job we've been working on. Uh, built by Dave Haynes at Haynes Construction. Uh -huh. um, I think we've been here for probably three or four years. Have you really? Yeah. And it, what have you done on this property? It started as a dirt pile when we first got here. And so down below, main house first. Uh -huh. And then we transitioned into what they call the recreation barn. It's got a sports court wow. and a lounge in it. And um, then the ag barn was next. And now we're up here on the uh, wine cave, which a wine cave is really popular in wine country for storage. Uh -huh. But this is actually a private wine cave for just lounging and, and enjoying dinner out in the view. Wow, we're gonna have some fun today, I have a feeling. We're gonna see what CJ does for a living as an electrician. Let's get going. Working grapes, I'm assuming? Check it out. <laughs> they definitely brought the farm to the house, which I really like. I do like that a lot. You know, the landscape definitely fits fits the property, and then you walk into this ultra modern house. So check it out. I know it's so interesting that uh, difference between kind of rugged farm, you know, just some clover, nothing super fancy, not like some expensive grasses, uh, and the plants, and then all of a sudden, man, check out this house. Wow, this is unbelievable. Come inside, I'll show you. Super modern. Man, I'm super proud of what we got to do on this project. Wow, really a, modern and pretty. Oh, it's a beauty. There are just layers and layers of detail. Wow. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll show you every detail, but man, this is a fun one. I wish every job was like this. So you wired all this, you did all the electrical on this project? All the electrical is us, uh, lighting system, but we you know, work hand in hand with every other trade. Yep. Um, between you know, HVAC, the builder, uh, sync systems is the integrator audio cameras so you know it's a it's a handoff for all of us but um, it's a collaborative team effort that's pretty awesome and we're on a working farm but it's interesting there's not a lot of view from this house oh uh, there's some glass windows and uh, all we got to do is push a button it's tied in with the lighting system okay. and the automatic shades uh, come right up. Oh man, check that out. <clears throat> so it's all wow. Lutron, so it's integrated. This is just a remote, but it's on the central system. So every keypad can open, wow. um, iPad, you know, it's really it's awesome. Fabulous. Now that those shades are up, you can see the incredible view from here. W windows, these are doors, man. These are doors. Yeah, I actually got Dave Haynes, the builder behind us. These are gonna be tied into the automation system. So right now we're gonna manually open them, but eventually you're gonna be able to push a button and these bad boys will open on their own. Wow. So check it out. Really it, cool. From corner slides into a pocket and then this guy slides into a pocket over there. So this whole corner opens up. It's like this whole side of the house is gone from the windows. Oh yeah, they're on DC uh, gear motors. It's really cool technology, but wow. I mean, does it get any better? than opening up and actually so you know, cool you're in the outdoors man no doubt now this is not what you do every day on every project right this is obviously kind of the pinnacle of super custom super detailed homes uh, yeah i wish every job was like this um not every job is like this but yeah i mean we work on everything from you know a track home up to this this is what we want to be working on yeah. every day and i mean it's so satisfying when you get to work on something like this sure. with a team and collaborate it's really great but your job or your company i should say mainly focuses on residential construction as an electrician uh and are you mainly doing new construction are you doing remodels primarily new construction but you know, that'll morph from a remodel to new construction. It'll look like a new construction job, but it is a remodel. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of open lots around. It's all been snatched up. So a lot of them already have existing homes that are demoed. And I can see that. Yeah. And how'd you get into this, CJ? Like, what was your path to become an electrician? Uh, it was it was just right out of high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to work on hot rods, actually. Is that right? And, uh, you know, moonlighted a little bit at the body shop and realized quickly the automotive industry was not, you know, what I thought it was. 
and just fell in my lap. Um, you know, a high school friend, and I got an offer uh, from her dad to be an apprentice really early on and just jump right yeah. in. And uh, here we are 20 years later and still doing it. That's pretty wild. So what does that path look like? Uh, you graduated from high school. You started on the job as an apprentice. Did you know at that point, like, oh, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to learn this. Because if I understand it right, there's a similar apprenticeship for electricians as there are plumbers. We talked to the Eric Ani, uh, and there's a kind of a four-year program where you go to some classes. You have to do a certain number of hours in the job underneath yeah. a, a master electrician. Is mm -hmm. it similar for electrical? Yeah, so it varies region to region, right? So in California, though, it works, and it's very similar elsewhere. You know, you're, it's on-job training, but you also have classroom hours. So okay. both are super important. Um, but you know, most of it is working documenting your hours after you get X amount of hours for whatever tier you're trying to go for, you test out and, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a general journeyman, it's four years. So it's just, it's just as long as college. Oh yeah, for sure. So from 18 to 22, you were working in the field, mm -hmm. you're going to some classes and might as well have been in college at that point in some respects, except you had no debt. Yeah. Uh, and you were making probably a pretty good hourly wage, and right? Getting paid to learn. I mean, I think that's the way to go. Um, and again, it's, you know, it's a dream being able to work with your hands and it, you know, it, it's definitely a, a fit for what kind of person you are. Yeah. Um, but if you like being hands on and, and being proud of something you can stand back on and say, I was part of this or I built that, it's really neat. I think that's what's fascinating about coming to this job and hearing you talk about the details here and what it took to integrate with the other tradespeople, with the builder, with the carpenters, with uh, the millwork guys, the cabinet guys, and get all those details just right. I mean, when you come in here, there is nothing that's out of place on this house. It's a passion project. And I think it's like in any in other industry, you know, you have to really love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so that took a while, you know, when just like anything, if you're in college, you might not know the courses that you're taking are what you want to do the rest of your life. And so the same thing, I, I was lucky. I got to bounce around and, and experience some commercial, some residential, some, some service. And I think it's important to be well-rounded that way. But you know, working on, on custom is, is definitely where, where we love. And it's interesting how you're going from wiring and drilling to when you get a lighting system. Well, now you're doing computer program too, oh, yeah. right? And you're doing layout and you're uh, figuring out how all these switches and banks can go to this one location. Where do I wire that? There's, a, there's really a lot of uh, critical and logical thinking mm -hmm. and like, I gotta, I gotta solve this problem. Because only so much is on the plans, right? Even yeah. uh, when it comes to the electrical trade, I find a lot of designers, a lot of architects, they hardly put anything on the plans for electrical. Maybe the recessed lighting plan on something called a reflected ceiling plan, mm -hmm. where it's kind of like a picture of the ceiling. But beyond that, you don't typically uh, get as an electrician where the outlets are going to go. Yeah. Uh, and so there's a, there's a lot of problem solving on the job side in your job. Yeah, I mean, coming from, like I said, a background where we, I was able to work on several different types of projects with different companies as I built up to, to then going out on my own. Uh, I realized quickly that residential was much different than commercial because you've seen commercial plans where they're drawing, I mean, every detail, the mechanical schedules laid out. In residential, especially custom residential, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. The architect draws what they want to see and you know how it mechanically works um, and what's required structurally and things like that but the design team comes in with elevations and we get to see where things are going to go on the wall yep. but all the back end logistics is you know us in the field yeah. or like you said behind a computer screen with spreadsheets yeah. and figuring out loads and dedicated circuits and where the light switches are going to go um, it's it's definitely not just you know what you would think it would be like crawling in crawl spaces and pulling wire there's there's definitely different facets of the of the job that you know that i don't think a lot of people see yeah for sure i want to go see that cool building over there what is that one that is that's a um, recreation barn it's actually got a sports court a lounge it opens up clo um oh. this big door opens up to this pond a so rec barn yeah I, I think that was probably i mean you see this beautiful house and that building and there's more going on uh, behind us but there's a lot of infrastructure too so there's i mean we had to get power from from our power source or utility company to this house to that so i mean between trenching and ah, there's a lot of stuff that so you were doing just, underground utilities too we and we lucky we get to again a team effort um you know we don't have tractors and stuff as much as i wish i did you might um, you never know yeah, someday. someday we might have a, a nice excavator but 
Um, you know, the underground crew and coordination with the builder is another, you know, team effort. But yeah, I mean, we've probably got, I don't know, 50,000 feet of wire in this job. It's insane. You know, miles of, of between the low voltage integration and power distribution and lighting. It's, it's, it's got some wire in it. That's pretty awesome. Let's go check out the rec bar. Yeah, let's go check it out, Matt. Wow, look at this building. This is so cool. Check it out. It's the uh, rec barn, they call it. Indoor sports court. Lounge. Bar area, yeah. lounge. Oh, yeah. And what is this crazy little net right here? This is a badminton court. This badminton? Isn't it awesome? Though? No way. And That's awesome. crazy. Detail, man. Even the perimeter, you know, they got it uh, marked out. It's really awesome. I have a badminton story for you. I grew up in the 1970s in Pittsburgh, and I played badminton with the famous football player, Lynn Swan, one time. Oh, the guy, yeah, he could toe tap. I know, he Lynn was Swan amazing. Ballet, yeah. He's, he was a great, I, I took badminton in uh, junior high. I think I, I think I still got it. I think that's we could, fabulous, we'll, man. We'll, maybe we'll play a game. I think we totally still have it. Uh, lights are pretty fabulous up here. These look like some kind of commercial lights. Yeah, that was a challenge, you know, I think um, in a, application like this it could be a warehouse light you know a square troffer and these are are, are really high-end nice uh, high output lights that you know high bay mm -hmm. is what we call it but again you know you look up at a costco and you could end up with that and these yeah. are just aesthetically just beautiful they these are really right pretty in. what a cool spot a bunch of storage it looks like with patio spaces oh yeah i mean all uh, electric heaters around outdoor um it's it's just a great space what do you have to do to wire this big uh like airplane hangar style door so it's hydraulic driven but okay. there's an electric motor hidden above and it ties in with the integration system so it's just a push of a button opens huh. right up and it runs on 110 power? Or? It's actually a 240 volt motor. It's an industrial hydraulic um, pump motor. So it, it's it's like a two horse motor, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's just right out of the industrial application. That's really cool. What a neat, I mean, totally different out of the ordinary for residential. And yet this is still residential construction where yeah. you've got a high bay, You've got a motor. You've got a motor and a, a door that could be in an airplane hangar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All in a residential project. I feel like it's the best of both worlds, right? I mean, it's fun to work on residential. It's fun to work on commercial. And why not blend the both? I mean, every project of yours, it seems like CJ is a little bit different and has different challenges. You do different things every day. You're not in the same office. You're not in the same cubicle, are you? Yeah, I mean, I wish every job was like this, but it's still, I mean, we work on bathroom models. We hang ceiling fans. Yeah. You know, we do service work. Um, sure. So it's fun, like you said, mixing it up. Um, you know, reporting to the same office every day and logging into the same computer could get old. And oh, yeah. I, I don't think I could do it, but that's why, you know, I'm in the trades. That's pretty cool. If you could think back in your childhood, what set you up in your childhood, do you think, to maybe pursue this electrical trade? Um, so young, hands-on, you know, I, I, I knew right away that I, I liked working with my hands, whether it was, you know, building Legos as a little guy or later on following dad around with, you know, a hammer while he was working around the house. Uh, I'm first generation electrician, so dad didn't do it. He actually is a chef, huh. um, you know, restaurant guy, and, uh, but he was our handyman. Like we didn't have, you know, we, blew, we grew up blue collar. Um, but, you know, dad did everything around the house. I mean, tongue and groove hardwood floors. He did electrical. I mean, he, 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 was pretty he remodeled the kitchen, yeah, everything. And so then I just knew I liked it right away. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. That's pretty wild. You mentioned earlier, CJ, that you actually spent a, a, a summer, a minute uh, in the auto industry because you kind of grew up thinking you were going to get into hot rods or building mm -hmm. cars. Yeah. What was it about the auto industry for you? And no, no offense to anybody who's in that industry. No, but it's a great one. That, that was like, I don't know about this. I'm, and, and then all of a sudden later you got offered the opportunity to work as an apprentice electrician. Um, I think, you know, it was happened right around like 13, 14, where I realized, oh, I'm getting close to getting a driver's license, wanted a car. Dad said, you know, you either, you know, go to work and, and, and mom and dad both said, you know, earn a car or there's this old Mustang in the garage that he bought 15 years prior <laughs> to me being born even um, for mom. And he never got around to working on it, busy guy. And we just started tinkering away on it. And I hit this ledge where he, we did everything hmm. except the body work and paint. And so when I was around 15, I got a job with a local body shop and was able to, you know, kind of see how, how it all worked. And I can do body work and paint a car now. And we got to paint my high school car and I still That's have cool. it. Um, so I knew 
you know, right away. Uh, it, it's a dirty industry, and and it only took a few years to figure that one out. Yeah. So it's about 17 is when uh, it turned to, turned into electrical. Yeah, that's crazy. And then for you, what was that path from apprentice to journeyman? Did you do it in four years, took the classes, and then passed your journeyman's uh, test, right, to yeah. get to a journeyman's license? Yeah, it's 8,000 hours. In California, it's 8,000 hours. So essentially, you know, 2,000 hours of work year, four to, it's four to five years, you know, to get your... And, and once you accumulate the hours, you document them, you submit them into the state, and then you can test out as a journeyman. You have to pass the test, and then you get a card, and then you can go work for, for pretty much any uh, electrical contractor. And you're making money for those four years too, though, oh, right? Yeah. Like I you mean, got an hourly rate, yeah. and a, I'm assuming a decent wage oh, for yeah. a period I mean, of time, right? These guys, you're coming out of high school making mid-20s, you know, and you can't, you can't do that. You know, what are your other options yeah. when you're going to call a minimum wage? Um, so yeah, you're getting paid to learn. Not bad. Which is awesome. And how many nights a week were you going to class during that time? You know, it depends on, on the program you're in. But, you, you know, there's, there's the on job is absolutely the most important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, working for a good company that wants to teach a young guy is super important. Because there's no rules for them to, you know, have to expose you to everything. Sure. So it's, it's kind of up to you um, working for the right company. But then the school stuff's also important, you know. It book, the book end is, is not something to sleep on. one or two nights a week? Yeah, it's, it's a wet, it, on, uh, currently, yeah, it's like, um, depending again, uh, it's, it's, they're doing it online now, but when mm. I was doing it, it was, it was once a month for a full day. Okay. Yeah, so it's not terrible, but again, no, that book, the book stuff's important. That's not bad at all. Yeah. And then that test, what was that like? Was that something that you were really nervous about? Oh, yeah. Like, oh my gosh, am I gonna pass this? Yeah, I mean, for us as electricians, it's, it's code, you know, so the book's this thick. Yep. And that's really what they're testing you on is, do you know the code book? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of studying, but it pays off. And did you pass that test first time? The first time, yeah. I got lucky. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, that was one. Is that, that you know, uncommon? I, um, you know, it's gotten hard. I mean, it just depends. I, I was always a decent test taker. Uh -huh. I didn't love sitting in a classroom in high school. Correct me if, if I'm wrong, but is that that test that you take as a journeyman, does that cover both residential and commercial? Or are you taking a, a journeyman, or does your journeyman license actually cover a specific type of electrical work? Yeah, so it starts, it, 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 there's different tiers. So there is the residential ticket that you can get first, the, your residential card, I think is uh, three years. So it's like 6,000 hours. And then what they call the general journeyman is another 2,000 hours. So eight. 8,000 hours, again, four years, you uh -huh. know, it's very similar to like a college yeah. schedule. So you're out in the world, you know, Working and journeyman learning. electrician, you know, at the age of 21, 22, depending on when you graduate high school. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then how long till you can sit for, I would call it a master's license. That's what we call it yeah. in Texas. You guys call it something different here in California. I yeah, think. I don't, we don't get the cool title of master electrician as much as I want. Um, in California, it's a general journeyman is is the is the word we use okay which covers both commercial and yeah so your general journeyman eight thousand hours is it, it will cover commercial residential and industrial gotcha and then at that point you can have people working for you you can pull permits right so that's a little separate so we actually after you're you're a journeyman and you've worked for x amount of years um underneath a, a licensed c10 that's when if you want to start your own business you have to in california get a contractor's license with the electrical specialty um, after it. So we, we're a C10 and the 10 is electrical. So we're, we're, you know, another test and that test covers, it's, it's not just trade, there's also law. Uh. So that one's a tricky one too, again, cramming, but you know, once you're done with it, it's, that's it. Yeah. And that's super valuable to you. Cause then at uh, that point you could start your own company, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Once you're licensed, you get to get bonded and insured and you're out in the world and you can legally contract. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Good stuff, man. We got another building to see here, don't we? Oh yeah, this isn't it. This is the rec barn. There's also an ag barn and a wine cave. So how about that? Let's go check it out. Check it out, Matt. Working Ag Barn. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. This so, is... so would this be considered a hayloft? 
This wood, that's what I'm calling it. This door swings open, they can load in and load out with the tractor. I don't think there's actual hay going on here though, is there? No, it's a working uh, vegetable farm. So I think it's more of produce. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's go check it out. Man, I really like this space. This loft on this barn is absolutely beautiful. It really speaks to me because uh, it feels like a more affordable, more every man kind of space rather than the super manicured, super modern kind of space on those other houses. Functional, super simple. Mm -hmm. um, but a few things that like made our life easier when you look at the build of it is being that it's a cat um, of the plywood closed wall. Uh -huh. We have a wall cavity in there. So we're able to wire this thing like a traditional home. Right. Um, not so Romex in the walls, which mm -hmm. is basically a three, a three conductor wire, right? Yeah. So any a million different combinations, right? Um, but in this case, yeah, non-metallic sheath cables, the technical name, but okay. we know it is Romex, right? Okay. Um, but being that it's encased in a wall, plywood over it, you can't touch it. Uh, the rule is above eight feet. Okay. You know, if you can reach up and grab it, you're not supposed to use Romex. So we have a combination going on in here, Romex inside the walls, and then where it would be exposed, we actually ran it more like a commercial building in conduit. Okay, so this metal conduit then, its main purpose is to shield the wire from possible damage. Protect it. From someone grabbing it, and yep. maybe there was a nick on that wire. That yeah, sort of thing. physical protection is how the code book reads it. Got it. I like it. But yeah, a mix of uh, residential style wiring and commercial in a, in a barn. Yeah, this barn's really cool. So upstairs kind of kitchen for the farm workers, tool storage downstairs, and then a beautiful porch on the side too for uh, washing down the vegetables, getting them all stored and ready for the, the market to, uh, to take it, right? Yeah, if you would have seen the old barn that this thing replaced, I mean, these guys are spoiled and they know it, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I mean, again, it's, it's, it's ready for work, it's durable. Um, the way they built it, you know, you can clean it, you know, you're not, there's not all these nooks and crannies. It's That's really right. nice detail. And nothing here is precious like the main house, right? In the main house, you had all yeah. kinds of expensive finishes and expensive woods, but here it's, you know, painted plywood floor and, uh, and really just exposed plywood and trusses. Yeah. When Dave Haynes, the builder kind of presented this project to us, he told me uh, and our team, you know, make it commercial grade. These guys are going to use it. So that's what it is. It's all commercial grade receptacles. Again, yeah. it's, you know, taking into consideration them actually using the space is something, you know, it's not just pretty. It's got to yeah. be, it's got to be functional. I love it. Let's, uh, let's go back to your uh, start in the electrical trade. So we mentioned earlier that you spent a couple years in a, as an apprentice. Mm -hmm. You took your journeyman's license. Uh, who were you working for at that time? And kind of walk me through the couple years to get to where we are today. You're 36 years old? 36. Um, so I was lucky right out of high school, right? And I got to work for a really, really mom and pop shop. Um, a gal I went to high school with, her dad hired me right out of high school, worked there for three or four years, but really set the foundation for mm -hmm. me. I mean, the crew I was working with, I'm 18 at that point, And I think my journeyman or journeyman, you know, I was working with a few that's how the format is, you know, you, you team up, basically you're with a journeyman or more and they manage you throughout the day and mm -hmm. teach you um, as a mentor, basically. Um, but being able to kind of work with guys that were, you know, 10 years older than me and they were like a big brother. Um, it was a really good, I'd call it an upbringing, you know, yeah. but into the trades, it was, it was really cool. That's pretty cool. So then uh, walk me through what it took for you then to go from taking that journeyman's test to actually starting CNC Electric. Yeah, that was just years, you know, um, 15 years in working for guys. Um, again, I've worked for really great people. I, I never burned a bridge. Um, I always put in a hard work, you know, I always wanted to walk away from any job yeah. like I, I was contributing. Um, but I just got to the point where, you know, it was, it was, it was time for me. I, I had ideas that I wanted to implement. And when you're working for someone else, it's not necessarily yeah. uh, possible. So I, I, you know, branched out and it was just me for a long time. I had my brother working for me in the early days. How old were you when you started CNC? Uh, so my daughter's seven and my wife was pregnant. So, okay. it, you know, it's been about seven or eight years gotcha. uh, since I said, honey, I'm, I'm starting my own business. So before you were even 30, you mm -hmm. own your own company. You had your basically your master's license mm -hmm. at that point, and you had uh, you were bonded and licensed, so you could actually get work for yourself, right? Yep. So that's what they require in California. You you pass your test, you go through all the certification, 
you put in your applications and then you test out as a journeyman. And then after that, you have to work X amount of years to get your contractor's license. And same process, you know, tests, uh, it's checking all the boxes and you gotta be licensed and insured and, and then you're, you're legal to go contract. That's pretty wild. And fast forward, not many years, six, seven years later, you've got five guys mm -hmm. uh, on your team that are in various phases yeah. of uh, becoming licensed. How many of those guys are journeymen at this point? I got two leads. And I got three apprentices. Uh, they're like family. It's really cool. I mean, we're we're such a tight knit group, and I think that's important. And that's how I've I've always tried to structure since the start of our company to kind of have that family atmosphere that I got to experience early on. And again, it's not it's not so much a, a job. I, I want it to be a career. I want these guys and gals to be with the company as you know as long as they want. Just providing you know that that environment, I think, is a is a real positive thing. And I think. It's important for at least our company. Yeah. Uh, CJ, tell me about what a young person starting in the trade could make. Uh, and then as they progress in their career, they get their journeyman license, uh, maybe then working in the trade for 10 years. Can you give me any range for what you think they might make oh, in, this, uh, in this trade? You know, I think it's, it's, it's just like any industry. It varies so much. It mm -hmm. depends on the atmosphere you want to be in, the type of work you want to do. Um, the type of company you want to work with, whether it's big or small, but you know, it's not uncommon for an apprentice right out of right out of high school to be making in the mid twenties. And you hear, you know, supervisor or foreman electricians making up to a hundred bucks an hour in California. So, Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're a foreman and you're running a crew of fifty guys in a skyscraper, that's. But again, there's there's these different levels, and there's yeah. a lot of stuff in between. So, when someone says electrician or or carpenter, in my head, it's like. There's so many subcategories under that, that that's what I like about the trades is like being able to choose where you, you fit in best. You know, I didn't fit in very good on these giant jobs where we were just running hundreds of miles of pipe a day, but I have a lot of buddies that are great at, at, at fitting into that and, mm -hmm. and they love it. Again, there's so many different options. So many options. And I think that's a great part to uh, stop today's episode uh, really, really enjoyed seeing the finished work, the uh, beauty of what you do, the craftsmanship, the precision yeah, of what you do, the is passion. What I, yeah, I think it's important. You know, we go to work and of course you have good days and bad days, but um, for the most part, it's a labor of love. Actually, one thing I want to mention since you mentioned that word passion, have you ever seen the Mike Rowe video? He's the dirty jobs yeah, guy. Yeah, he's so good, yeah. He made this video that was just a couple minutes long where he talks about uh, we do a disservice to our kids by talking about following your passion or follow your dreams. When you were 17, your passion and your dreams was to be a hot rod maker, mm -hmm. maybe, right? Yeah, or I wanted to a hot shop. Rod, yep. And had someone said to you, follow your passion or dreams, that may not have been the best advice. Whereas the opportunity for you coming out of high school yeah. was an apprentice position in an electrical shop. Uh, and this career now, would you say you're passionate about it? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when I look at it, again, I liked building things. I liked standing back and saying, you know, I was part of this, whatever it was, you know, at that time it was cars. Um, and, it, you know, it's a complete lateral move. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm able to, to walk away from a project and be super proud of what we put into it or what the team built. Yep. Um, and, and then also working with like-minded builders. I mean, it's, to me, it's, you know, it's, it's still a hot rod. It's still, it is. you know, and again, you, you, there's not one way to look at it. You can, in the trades, you can bounce around. I know carpenters that have become electricians yeah. and vice versa. That's you right. know, it's like, yeah. you don't really know your passion until you expose yourself to it. That's a great point. CJ, beautiful work here at this finished job, but you know, it'd be fun to kind of roll back the construction timeline and see what this might look like or something like this in construction. Yeah. Can we go visit an under construction job? Oh yeah. We're going to take you in one, um, same builder, it's rough framing, and again, it's you get to see inside the walls. Um, it's a remodel too, so there's some, you know, there's some crawling. Again, every day is not the same for us. <laughs> we might be working in a beautiful finished custom home or a barn, or you know, sometimes we're crawling under houses and through insulation. But it's all part of the fun, you know. It, it, it really is. That's so awesome, man. Stay tuned for the next episode of Talking Trades. We're talking electrical. Next up, I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and show you what they've been doing to encourage young people to join us in the trades. 
I want to thank our friends at Front Door for sponsoring this Talking Trade series. If you're not familiar with Front Door, they are reimagining how homeowners maintain and repair their most valuable asset, their home. As the parent company of two leading brands, Front Door brings over 50 years of experience in providing their members with comprehensive options to protect their homes from costly and unexpected breakdowns through their extensive network of pre-qualified professional contractors. American Home Shield has approximately 2 million members and gives homeowners budget protection and convenience, covering up to 23 essential home systems and appliances. Now, Front Door is a cutting edge, one-stop app for home repair and maintenance. Enabled by their stream technology, the app empowers homeowners by connecting them in real time through video chat with pre-qualified experts to diagnose and solve their problems. The Front Door app also offers homeowners a range of other benefits, including DIY tips, discounts, and much more. More information about American Home Shield and Front Door, visit frontdoorhome.com. Now, as the largest provider of home service plans in the nation and a network of approximately 16,000 independent contractors, Front Door is spreading the word and advocating to bring new talent into the pipeline by creating opportunities for young people as plumbers, electricians, and other highly skilled professions. Front Door has also been sponsoring organizations committed to the advancement of the skilled trades like Skills USA and Be Pro Be Proud. I've been to their events. Those are amazing organizations and huge thanks to Front Door for their partnership in this Talking Trade series. I want to say a huge thanks to my friends at Sashco for sponsoring this Talking Trade series. First off, if you're not familiar with them, Sashco makes a huge line of premium cocks and sealants that I use every day on my high performance builds. They're a family owned company that makes their products in Colorado, but they also have been a massive supporter of trade school education. Now, if you are a trade school teacher watching this video, I wanna tell you about their class pack program, which was designed for you to use in your classroom to educate students about sealant technology and application. Now, I've been through a version of this program and it was really fun and educational. You can enhance your curriculum with their expert resources. Learn more at sashco.com backslash trades dash support. Now, if you aren't a teacher, you can still make a difference in this battle to bolster our trade base. Take the Sashco Challenge. Volunteer a local trade school in your town, capture the moment, share it on social media and tag Sashco, and your reward will be a free case of Lexel as a token of their appreciation for supporting trades education. Thanks again, Sashco, for sponsoring these videos.